Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. And we're getting back into the fourth quarter final of the WCS Season 2 Final Tournament. It is going to be Scarlet, and it is going to be Bomber, and it is going to be a TVZ going off right now. And Scarlet actually doing a pretty spectacular job in the first game. It wasn't a total overwhelming win, but it was a it was a long and steady sort of win. And I think I think she was always in control of the game. There was never a part of the game where Bomber looked like he might have been in the lead. I, it was either they were sort of just Scarlet was just staying with him, staying a little bit ahead, staying a little bit more ahead, and then suddenly she was just way too far ahead and. Bomber just had to give the GG, so very, very nice game there from Scarlet, and yeah, she's 1-0 in this best of five series, so she needs two more wins to make it into the semi-finals, and we will see how exactly Bomber uh, responds. Now, well, obvi obviously he's going to be trying to win, but yeah, I do not know if he's if he's going to change his playstyle up a little bit. Um, he definitely did go for some... Uh, for a good counter to a Mutaling, he went for the tanks, uh, marine tank, and his tanks just got caught out in a bad position because of the extremely awesome creep spread from Scarlet. She had creep spread basically right up to just um, within like a hundred meters of his uh, of his third base. It was really really close, and as soon as he moved out, the lings and the bailings were already there, already waiting to go, and. Yeah, he really, really got hit hard, so there we are. That was it, and it looks like we do have a hatch before pull for Scarlet. So perhaps what she did last time, but yeah, I didn't quite catch exactly what happened last time. But anyway, it's going to be fine here. A drone trying to make some sort of stuff happen, but probably just going to keep scouting around here. Uh, maybe going to harass this uh, SCV. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. But there we go, it's going to be chasing that drone again once again. And I don't think, yeah, that drone is going to have to run. It's got, she's just got no chance of taking out that worker anymore, I don't think. So there we go, it's good. drone's going to be getting out of there and eventually will regen to full life. But did manage to take quite a bit of health off two separate SCVs. So not a bad job, not a bad job at all. And yeah, Bomber once again going for an early expansion. Not as crazily early as he did last time, but still fairly early. I feel like the timing for this one was the same as game one, but I don't think he's going to go for an early third like he did last game. The early last game, basically he had a third base started right about now. I don't believe he's going to do that. He's going to go for a fast factory instead. Wonder if we're going to be seeing some Hellions, Hellbats, Widow Mines. What we're going to be seeing coming off this first. And it may just be standard sort of Hellion play. But we all have to see. And he's got to wait a little bit. There we go. There's the reactor coming down. So almost certainly going to be either fast Hellions. Or maybe fast Widow Mines with some drop play. But I do not know. I really don't know. You'd, you'd have to get a starboard off. To, uh, to actually get the Widow Mine drop play. And he's only mining off one gas at the moment, so it's going to be a little bit tough. But anyway, the, um, the uh, workers, definitely going to be in a good position as far as workers are concerned. Scarlet is a little bit ahead, but that is to be expected. And no doubt she is going to be getting a third base very, very soon. At this point in a, in a tournament, you can almost start assuming that Bomber already has a natural expansion and that a third is required. I mean, that's an extremely safe assumption to make. So no doubt there will be one going down, probably here, in uh, in the next minute or so. And that guy looks like he's, here we go, there's the expansion coming down. Now Bomber, once again going for, <coughs> not as early as last game, but it's still a fairly early third for a Terran player. And we will see if he actually lands this and starts to mine off it, or if he's just going to use this to uh, build up workers while he's uh, while he's doing some other stuff. While he's uh, yeah, just trying to get the rest of his forces up. I suppose this is fine because I mean he's not worried about the Zerg player attacking anytime soon. I mean he's not expecting a Zerg attack 
within the first 10 minutes. And, I mean, with the double gas going down here, I, I don't know. I, I feel like Scarlet's probably going to go for another Mutaling sort of offensive. And that means a ton of workers now get as much gas as she can. And then you start getting, you start slowly getting the Ling upgrade. You start getting the Lair out fairly soon. She hasn't actually got a Lair yet, which is uh, definitely if she's going through Muta Ling. I might have expected a Lair, but then again, it's not like she's going to get out Muta's in like the next minute or so. It's not like that's part of the plan. She's got to get the economic background going first. And then once the economic background is there, man, these Hellions are actually getting a ton of Ling kills. So that guy is totally baller at the moment, but it's only going to take one drone hit to take him out, so... You, you got to know when to call it quits, and I think right then, he probably should have just called it quits. It was just too much for him to handle at that point. But yeah, as I was saying, I mean, Scarlet, if she is going for Muters, which I think she is, then... Yeah, she's going to wait maybe to get the gas over here, maybe to get a full free base mining. And then she starts going for the lair and um, all that other sort of stuff. But yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, if she's going for Muta Ling. I would really. There we go. There's the lair coming down. So, just as I was about to say, it's uh, probably going to be too late. It seems late to put that down. She's going for it. And there we go. The Bailing's Nest out there now. So she feels like she's at a comfortable number of workers. She's going to continue producing them. But she's also going to be building a bunch of tech structures as well to go for all that sort of stuff. And, yeah, I feel like she's going to be fine. Bomber, let's talk about Bomber here for a sec. He is getting a ton of barracks up with a ton of reactors. So he's pretty much going for exactly the same thing he's going for, went for last game. Now, I don't see any evidence of siege tanks coming out. He may be deciding to just rely on the Widow Mines, not even worry about the tanks this time, because last game, he went for tanks, and then after he lost three of them, he just went for pure Widow Mines after that. And it looks like this game, he's not going to worry about the tanks, just go for pure Widow Mines. And that's, that's definitely not a bad decision. I mean, Widow Mines are very, very good versus, um, versus Lings, versus Banelings. And they're also good versus Muters, which gives them a definite advantage over the tanks, where the tanks are only good versus the, uh, the Muter, uh, versus the, uh, Lings. The Widow Mines are good versus all of the units in the Mutaling. And here we go, the Queen is going to get knocked out. So that is freaking awesome. And all of this creep is going to get spread back. So uh, Bomber obviously realising that uh, he cannot just uh, sit back. He cannot be as defensive as he was last game. He tried to move out a bit last game, but the creep spread really, really took him by surprise. He's not going to make the same mistake again. And there we go, just getting into the Medivac. going to drop him off the top. But that's still a uh, still a no-go zone, so he's swept the creep back a little bit, and he's managed to get some Widow Mines placed down there. We've got two Overseers, and there we go, going to be wiping all of them out. So great play by Scarlet so far, losing that Queen, basically because it didn't really know what was going on, but now she knows what these guys are doing, and she's going to be putting the pressure on this invading force, and I don't think they're really going to be able to do any worker damage any year. High um, hatchery damage, anything like that. They may be able to do a skip and a jump over. Actually, I'm, I'm, I may have, I may have uh, overestimated Scarlet a little bit because, or maybe just underestimated Bomber because he's got a massive amount of reinforcements in there. And suddenly Scarlet doesn't have enough ground forces to deal with this massive amount of Marines. She's uh, spent all of her minerals and gas on muters, and that massive stream of ground units. For that period of 20-30 seconds, it just wasn't there. I mean, she needed a constant stream of reinforcements, and she just didn't have them. They're out now. And that is good. That is definitely good, but she just didn't have them. Oh, these Widow Mines. Oh. They weren't quite grouped up as nice as they could be, but... Yeah, really, really doing a good job. His bomb has evened out a lot of the worker numbers. He took out that third base. So he's really, really putting the hurt. On Scarlet, and he can definitely use this advantage. He's, he's actually going in a little bit harder. Um, and there we go, the Widow Mine's doing a great job as well, just hitting the Muters all over the place. That one was just about to fire up again, but not quite. And the Muters finally finishing it off, and the Medivacs, they've run out of speed, so all of them are going to go down here. Oh, actually, the Marines might save a couple. There we go, the Muters having to turn back. 
And once again, Bomber working on the creep, so he's really, really switched on in this game. He's really getting everything done that he needs to. He's putting on the pressure, and importantly, he's taking out the creep. He's making sure the creep does not get right onto his doorstep. And so far, he's, he's countering the play that Scarlet did so effectively last game. And I think, he, I think he's doing a great job. Um, it's just... Now it's just going to come down to, I guess, a combination of uh, macro and just plays. I mean, Widow Mine hits are going to be huge in this game. If they hit a massive clump of Widow Mines or Banelings, see that huge, huge Widow Mine hit basically saved all of those Marines, but there were only like four or five Marines left anyway, versus a whole crap ton of uh, Muters. And yeah, look at this stuff, man. He's doing a great job with the creep. The muters are coming in, but the muters, they don't have nearly enough to take out this massive marine group. I don't think there are any amount of uh, muters that can effectively take out this many marines. He's got to have link support to take them out. And where are all the bailings? Nowhere. There are no bailings. There's like five of the bastards. So all the bailings haven't been taken out by some really, really nice widow mine hits. He's doing the splits over here, working with the creeper. Splitting up is actually... Uh, might actually be a bit of a danger right here because the Muta pack is just so huge. You need all your Marines clumped up to effectively force the Mutalists away. But if they're all clumped up, then you have to worry about Bailings. And that's what happens when you get so many Mutas that you're basically screwed either way. But, of course, the answer is uh, more Marines. The answer to any problem is more Marines. And Bomber has got a crap ton of Marines. And he's trying to do a drop over there. Yeah, they're forcing back a little bit. Not quite. The main force coming over here. He's got to scan down. Widow Mine hits. Doing some nice stuff. But I feel like the Bailings are still getting hits off on the Marines every now and then. Definitely shredding this army back quite a bit. He's got 3-3 three, three upgrades on the way. As far as these Bailings go, they are still morphing in. So he can't see. They've got 2-2. Two, two, and the Muters have 1-0. So nice getting at least one upgrade on those. But... Scarlet's right back against the wall right now, and she does not have time for upgrades anymore. She's got to push off this absolutely insane amount of Terran aggression right here. Getting a snipe off on the Widow Mine is really, really great. Widow Mine just hitting a single Zell uh, Ling there. Not really getting the clumps of bailing hits that Bomber wants to get with the Widow Mines, but he has managed to get these forces in here while still having a sizable army over there, and they are going to take down the base. All these marines are going to go down very, very fast. But he's keeping the base count down for Scarlet. And this, um, this aggression down here is keeping the third base down. So Scarlet needs to get these guys away, and that was a beautiful attack. She, he, she had the bailing numbers out, and they just went in all over the creep. There's still a ton of creep there. Um, Bomber not quite managing to completely knock it back. And, yeah, Scarlet doing a great job at forcing off that aggression. But, and she's actually gone for a fourth base over there. But Bomber somehow knows about it. And this is going to get wiped out. If, I mean, the Muters cannot defend this by themselves. So there we go, that base is going to be cancelled. And one, one Marine going to be chasing the drone just to uh, clean things up. And... Yeah, the muters. Oh, watch out for that Widow Mine. Watch out for the Widow Mine. Oh, they take it out. It does take about a second before, uh, between when it sees the forces and when it shoots the forces. So if you are very, very fast, you can take it out. And yeah, the three overseers going around with the muter cloud, doing a very, very good job. But actually going for a fourth base out here. So uh, being very, very aggressive so far. I suppose there's a Ling over there, so he probably saw that Ling and he's just like, you know what, I'm going to expand somewhere else. There we go, constant chain of Widow Mines coming out. It reminds me a lot of the old siege tank lines, where you'd have a line of siege tanks stretching towards the enemy and the Lings run in. They attack the front tank and all the tanks behind it can shoot it. So it's not just a big clump of tanks, it's a line of tanks. So you go in to take this one out, you get hit by the one behind it. And it's a really, really beautiful play. And it looks like it looks like Bomber's doing a really, really good job. Scarlet has got the Muta pack and she's keeping them alive quite well, but the amount of lings that she's losing, I mean basically she just can't keep enough bailings out on the field. Do bailings go in? Some of them do hits, 
most of them don't. They get taken out by other Widow Mines or Stimming and Running Marines. And then she has to wait for a whole bunch of more Bailings to go out before she can uh, before she can do anything because the Mutas, it's just suicide to go in there. So she's really got no choice but to wait for the Bailings. And in that, in that point where she's waiting for the Bailings, it's just... I, I mean, the bomber is pretty much free to do it as he pleases. He can move this massive group of Marines over there, start taking this shit out, and the Mutas can't do anything about it because they would just get shredded, so... Really, really like that play from Bomber. Moving around and getting past all of the things that made Scarlet such an aggressive player, such an awesome player in the first game. Number one was a creep spread. Bomber was on it 100% this game on the creep spread so hard. He was constantly just shredding that creep back, doing a great job. And second, uh, he didn't go for the tanks, he went for the Widow Mines. He pushed them in and he did a beautiful, beautiful play versus Mutaling. And the important thing is, he did not back off at all. The, he Basically, he reinforced all his units over there. He did not retreat. He got wiped out a few times. His entire army got wiped out by an especially good push from Scarlet, but when he was up there, he would never pull back. He'd always keep the pressure on. He kept the pressure on right here, which is awesome because, yeah, Scarlet just couldn't get that base down again, and she so wanted to. And, yeah, he just did the splits. He had forces there. He constantly streamed forces over there and keep Scarlet trying to defend this location as well as this location, and she had a very, very hard time doing it. And eventually, I think the economy just... Um, just definitely got to her because she just could not keep up. I think she was just hatchery starved a little bit. She had a macro hatchery there, but in the end it just wasn't enough. She just couldn't build the amount of bailings that she really needed to. And she was actually, wow, she actually lost a ton of overlords as well. <laughs> I do not know uh, what exactly, uh, how exactly Bomber was taking out all those overlords, but yeah, she was really, really, that's a really low overlord count for this stage of the game. She should have had a ton more. So obviously the Marines must have been just taking these guys out all over the place. And she just didn't have the production capability to keep them up. So really, really nice job from Bomber. And really, really emphatic turnaround from game number one. Putting himself in the driver's seat. And he says, you know what? I know how to deal with your Muta Ling right now. So you can try it again, or you can go for something else, and we'll see how it goes in game number three. And game number three is going to be coming right up. One all so far in this best of five, so we've still got a long way to go in this series. Stay tuned for that. This has been Harry Muppet. I hope you enjoyed this game.